the junior bantamweight if you prefer. This one is scheduled for 12 rounds. And there's Mr. T leading out Little T, Johnny Tapia. And, of course, he's had a very checkered history, Johnny Tapia. Drug dealer. Now, he says reformed, but uh, recently found trying to sell fake drugs to an undercover policeman. Some people never learn, do they? But Tapia is undefeated in 29 professional contests. This is his first defence of his WBO super flyweight title, which, of course, he won beating Henry Martinez in October of last year in 11 rounds. Tapia, the local man. And the ironic thing about Tapia being the local man, he's not even the best super flyweight in Albuquerque. That honour belongs to one Danny Romero, the NABF champion, who's also from Albuquerque. And he's ranked number seven by the IWBR, whereas Tapia gets in at number 12. Jose Sosa down at 44. Right, that's a smart fight. I don't know nothing about this guy. He's an Argentina champion. He's rugged. He's tough. But I'll be right there waiting for him. I'm going to stick and move on him. I'm going to cut the ring on him. I'm going to show him how really a true champion fights. Well, we'll see if that's true. Ladies and gentlemen, Bob Aaron, Top Rank Incorporated, and Budweiser, the undisputed, undefeated King of Beers, present the main event of the evening, 12 rounds for the WBO Junior Bantamweight Championship of the World. Tonight's bouts have been sanctioned by the New Mexico Athletic Commission, Stan Gallup Chairman, and the World Boxing Organization, Francisco Valcarcel, President. Judging at ringside, from Mexico, Rafael Lopez Santos. From Puerto Rico, Nelson Vasquez. And from Phoenix, Arizona, Aaron Kaiser. Supervising for the WBO at ringside from Colombia, Reynero de la Vega. And our third man in the ring from Puerto Rico, Ismael Fernandez. The challenger in the red corner to my right, wearing white and blue trunks, at 114 and one quarter pounds from Cordoba, Argentina. His record, 15 wins, seven losses, five draws, nine wins by knockout, Jose El Monito Sosa. And across the ring in the blue corner, wearing turquoise and black trunks at 114 and three quarter pounds, fighting out of Albuquerque, New Mexico. WBO Junior Bantamweight Champion of the World, Johnny, the baby face assassin, Tapia. So there is a little crackerjack himself, Johnny Tapia, known as the baby face assassin. Well, he's got a rugged job on his hands here, Jose Rafael Sosa. This is his first fight outside of his native Argentina, and he wants to impress. He's the reigning Argentinian champion. Also a former state champion in Argentina. Argentina, I should say. And this is the first round of a scheduled 12, potentially. Just a couple of fights to go. So Sir Box Jose Lagos for the South American title. The flyweight championship. And was beaten on points over 12 rounds. Now he's won 15, lost 7, drawn 5, stopped just 9. So it's not a great record there for Sosa, but he proved he can elevate this performance for championship night. Now Johnny Tapia, well, he's had four notable wins that stamp him a class above this young fella from Argentina. The first one against ex-champion. John Johnson, that was way back in 1989. He beat Jesus Chong, another ex-champion in 1990. Luigi Camputaro, the Italian, former European champion, 
was outscored in a USGA title fight. And more recently, in fact, the last fight for Tapia, a second round knockout over Rolando Bohol, who, of course, fought and lost to Duke McKenzie in Britain. So that's in good form. Of course, Tapia, well, he did a spell inside. As you know, he packed it in in October of 1990, came back in March of 94. He's 28 years of age now, and that's uh, really on the wrong side to be considered a prospect as a super flyweight. But uh, Tapia's proved there's plenty of fight left in him yet. And who knows, a match with the other local favourite in Albuquerque, Danny Romero, that could materialise. And just to remind you of the current champions, Hiroshi Koshima, the Japanese, is WBC champion at this weight, as Tapia lets go with some good body shots there. Well, it looks, I'm afraid, as if this Argentinian Sosa is going to be in for a very tough night. Good start so far by Johnny Tapia. IBF champion at this weight is the Colombian Harold Gray. Strange name, that, for a Colombian. And the WBA champion is the Korean Hyung Chul Lee. <laughs> Unfortunately, Europe is not particularly well represented in these lighter weight divisions. Last few seconds, then, of a good first round for Tapia. Yep, Johnny Tapia wins the opener clearly, and that's just the kind of start he wanted. And, of course, when he won this championship, it was also at the pit in Albuquerque in front of all of his fans and family. And, of course, the crowd fed him in more ways than one. So, Jose Sosa, well, he's got some work to do. So far, he's been forced to defend in the opener. Looks like the seconds are going to go out the same kind of way. And Tapia doesn't care where they land. Very exciting little fighter, Johnny Tapia. Of course, Tapia became USBA champion back in 1990, also at Superfly. Made four defences, then he became NABF champion, of course, uh, in the fight before he won the WBO title, which was only two fights ago. Well, we're yet to see Sosa mount a serious attack as yet. He might just be considering this to be a fight where he's going to come on later rather than sooner and allow Tapia to make all the early running. It's fair to say that Johnny Tapia has not been tested since his comeback. And uh, as I said, the Independent World Boxing Rankings have got Sosa in at number 44, Tapia in at number 12. So an upset looks very unlikely here. But Tapia, good to watch. Oops, so easy, and that's a, just a stumble. No punch landed there. Referee for this one, Ismael Fernandez from Puerto Rico. And Tapia can't wait to get back to work. And, of course, this is a position that Tapia should have been in 
four, maybe even five years ago. He was right up there as champion of the USPA on the verge of a crack at the World Championship when he got dabbling in drugs. What a fool. But uh, once again, a good round there for Tapia. In fact, he's done very well under Paul Chavez, his longtime mentor, to get back into shape. And obviously, they've picked the right opponents for him. No names that uh, I particularly recognise on the record of Sosa. So they've obviously scoured long and hard to find someone who's very beatable. And of course, Sosa looks like he fits the picture. In fact, Sosa lost three of his first six fights. Two were draws and only one win. And that's a pretty poor start in anyone's language. He's won six of his last eight, though, with a loss and a draw in there somewhere. And, uh, well, a little bit of carelessness there by Sosa, but uh, Tapia overreacting. Fair right hand, followed by the jab by the Argentinian. And that is probably Tapia's favourite punch, the left hook to the body. Really does get an, an awful lot of leverage on that on the shot. by Tapia, the classic one, two, three combination. Right, that's two times I've told you about watching your head, says referee Fernandez. So Sosa then heading for the deduction department, and he's going to get points taken away. Tapia really fired up. And a, a reasonable result for Tapia, of course, would be a stoppage of this man. Although that said, he's only been stopped twice. Once in his second year as a professional. Of course, I say he's only been stopped once. He just once. So he's obviously fairly durable. I'm not showing any signs as yet that these punches are making much of a difference. And once again, a good round there for Tapia. And there is the Tapia corner. Of course, Mr. T, whose arm you can see down the left. No, in case you're wondering where you saw him before, in I think the series, the A-Team. And there you can see Sosa, careless with the head. So into round four. And this WBO Super Flyweight Championship. Well, you all know how I feel about the WBO. It doesn't mean a great deal to me, I'm afraid. I know there are some pretty good fighters who hold WBO championships, but uh, the title itself, the body itself, sadly lacking credibility. 
Of course, that can all change one day, who knows? We all thought the same about the IBF when it first started. Anyway, as we come into round four, Sosa has not won a round as yet. He's very close to having a point deducted for Keller shoots of the head. Fair exchange there between both men. And it's quite obvious to me that Sosa's not a puncher. Consequently, Tapia can get in, get close and relax whilst he's there. Under those circumstances, of course, you can look wonderful. Well, I would imagine that Sosa's warming up slightly to the fight, but is essentially very defensively minded in this match so far. Sosa still under pressure here by Tapia's incessant attacking. He's a very fit young fella, Tapia. And he does like to go forward and make the fight. Of course, it's fair to reflect on how he'd react against a strong man who actually took the fight to him. But I get a feeling he'd relish that too. But he's quite happy to be chasing as we've got half a minute to go in this fourth of a scheduled 12. Nothing sustainable so far by Sosa, as once again Tapia rips in a couple of good left hooks. Oops, and that's exactly the same as happened earlier. And that's poor balance by Tapia. Good round though for him. I know that it was a Thursday at midnight on Eurosport. Bit of replay here then from round four. Bit of a little fight back there from Sosa. But by and large, Johnny Tapia on top all the way so far with four rounds gone. He's got his 40 points intact. And Sosa now with 36. Round five. Well, that's odd. Sosa now leading off. He hasn't done that in the previous four rounds. So, as I say, maybe just feeling his time's going to come later rather than sooner in this particular match. And now taking the fight to Tapia. And quite naturally, Tapia responding there. No one's going to take his play away. Not in Albuquerque, anyway. Good body shot from Tapia. Sosa for, well, just careless use of the head, really. You wouldn't imagine he'd do that deliberately, would you? Because it was on the card, he'd lose a point. So now he's got some work to do to get back in this round. Hey, 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 
Chance of Johnny. Johnny coming around this hall. Fair left hook there from Sosa. So a pretty good start then to this fifth round by Sosa, but uh, he's lost that point once again. Tappy, they're just catching him on the waistband. Wants to be careful. Not that the referee, I dare say, would uh, deduct a point from him. Not in this hall, he wouldn't. Too sure that Tapia has hurt Sosa yet. Well, don't forget the point deduction. So Tapia won that round, albeit fairly closely, but uh, he's won it by a two point margin. Yeah, I don't think there's anything malicious in that uh, clash of uh, heads. This then is round six. And Tapia looking a good thing at the moment. So I say he is the WBO super flyweight champion or junior bantamweight champion if you prefer. And of course, there's no mileage, really, in a unification match at this weight. So the other three champions are a Japanese, a Colombian and a Korean. So uh, I'm afraid neither of those matches would be too attractive. And Tapia just go on, I think, picking up, uh, picking the bones of the likes of the Sosas of this world. Doesn't look like Sosa. Ain't gonna try anything too elaborate. At least not in the first half of the fight anyway. Sosa there, putting those long punches together and having a fair bit of success too. A minute to go then in the sixth. Of course, real effrontery to the Tapia fans if an opponent manages to land two or three punches on him at any one time. They don't like to see it. He's a reborn hero, is Johnny Tapia. Of course, everyone who supported him back in 1990 before his break will be back on his side again. close round there but uh, I think we're in the Tapia mold at the moment he can't seem to do a great deal wrong therefore and this also goes for the three ringside judges Sosa is gonna have to be a bit special 
to be given any kind of credit. We've had six rounds, we've got six more. The halfway stage is about to begin. Here we are then, round seven. Imagine the baby-faced assassin, Tapia, will be looking to try and take Sosa out in this last six rounds. He doesn't like to uh, leave things to chance. He wants to get rid of men early. In fact, only one man has lasted the ten rounds with Tapia since his comeback last year. Antonio Ruiz in his third comeback fight. But the rest have been beaten inside the limits. Tapia. Nice right back from Sosa. Well, he got a free shot there. It was a complete surprise out of the blue. Caught Tapia on the chin. Didn't make the slightest bit of difference. So that then has sussed Sosa. He's not a puncher. Maybe if he threw the right hand more accurately. And technically, correctly, he'd have a bit of power. But it flaps around. <laughs> and Tapia, a very dominant kind of personality. He won't allow a fighter to get on top of him. Likes to control the physical and the psychological. But uh, don't think he's uh, that intelligent. As I say, he tried to sell fake drugs to an undercover policeman. Got nicked, quite rightly too. Good shot there, sharp left hand from Tapia. So good round again then for Tapia, and he's looking exceptionally confident. He always has, though. But I must admit, in, his, in the first couple of fights he had on his comeback, he's slightly reticent, a little bit anxious, but when he's into his stride, he buzzes. Good left hook in replay there from Sosa as we come to round eight. So Sosa then. Cop Tapia with a left hook and a right hand in that seventh round. And neither punch made a great deal of difference. But uh, he won't get away with hanging his chin out against men who can hit. But then again, I don't suppose he'll be fighting any punches. They can keep him as WBO champion as long as they like in Albuquerque. Unless, of course, Danny Romero fancies chances. He's only 20, of course. He'll be picking up the mantle when uh, Tapia's packed it in. There is another Argentinian that uh, Tapia could face after this particular man has had his day. And that's a guy called Hugo Soto, who's ranked number nine. That's three places above Tapia. And of course, uh, 35 places above the man he's facing here. Jose Rafael Sosa has proved to be a durable, stubborn opponent. In fact, Tapia could also face uh, another Argentinian called Carlos Salazar, who's only ranked one below him, so there's a few fights left there yet. 
And Tapia getting the crowd going. He often does that. Likes to shake his hands around. And it really does spur him on. We've often seen him find another gear when the crowd get going. Of course, they've had no real household names in Albuquerque since the glorious days of Bob Foster when he ruled the world's light heavyweights with a ferocity that hasn't been matched since in that division. And, of course, Bob Foster went on to become the sheriff of Albuquerque. I'm not too sure that uh, Tapia could fit that particular role when his boxing career is over. But they might let him in the boys' brigade. Once again there, Sosa catching him on the chin with his head. 15 seconds to go then in this eighth round. And once again, the odd reasonable shot from the Argentinian, but Tapia in charge. Tuesday, 11 p.m. on Eurosport. Motors, the international motorsport magazine. Eurosport brings you the best of motorsports. Every week, pictures and results from across Europe and the world. Motors, Wednesday at 10 p.m. on Eurosport. Sports gone wrestling mad. On April the 1st, and these are no April Fools, we bring you a two-hour special with the superstars of world wrestling. The monsters of the ring come together in front of 60,000 spectators. It should be fun, at least from the safety of your armchair. The April the 1st wrestling special, Ooh, Saturday at 6 p.m. on Eurosport. Bit of replay here then from that eighth round with once again Tapia banging them in, waving his arms, getting the crowd going. We've got four rounds to go. Round nine is coming up. So then this is round nine. Johnny Tapia in the dark trunks defending his WBO Super Flyweight Championship for the first time. His opponent, the durable but limited Argentinian, Jose Sosa. Well, Tapia there showing it and landing it. And a barrage of fast punches from him. Tapia, not a devastating one-punch hitter, but he put so many of them together. through the ninth then good start to this round by Tapia and uh, well it's win a wee bit samey from Sosa he's rather predictable now and uh, Tapia will still soon start to realize 
but Sosa needs just one thing to win this one, and that's a punch out of the blue that carries a great deal of weight. And I'm not sure he's even capable of that. At this stage, I've got uh, Tappy with his 80 points intact. And Sosa now with 71. Don't forget, he lost the fifth round by two points. Got a deduction for a head clash for the third time. Well, it's all Tapia. And once again there, Sosa careless with his head. Well, that's a fair right hand from Tapia. Good shot. That's not a bad round again for the local man, Tapia. Ten points in front now. Three rounds to go. You do not have to make a hard fight out of an easy fight. You're winning every round anyway. Put my hand a little bit. Couple of dates for your diary for British fight fans. On Monday the 3rd of April, John Cox and Chris Nolan have got a show at Granville's uh, near Billing Aquadrome in Northampton. That's the 3rd of April, next Monday. Another one to mention a bit later. I'm trying to see. I know you are. You're doing a good job on the team. Okay? So that's Paul Chavez then. Just keeping Tapia going. Of course, it's all psychology from corner men. He's an absolute mile in front, and of course, all Chavez wants to do is make sure that Tappy does nothing stupid. So we enter the home straight. This is round 10. Of course, in the old days, there'd be five to go at this point. No, there'd be six to go, wouldn't there? The tenth, up to fifteen, inclusive. <laughs> and the last thing Tappy needs here is a cut, due to the careless headwork of his challenger. Tapia was dealt a double dose of bravado when he was born, wasn't he? <laughs> and a win here, of course, would give Tapia a far greater high than any of the drugs he used could. Although, to be honest, it's a turning in to a rather low-key title defence. So there was never any danger, I don't think, at any time that Sosa and Gold Tappy there making a fuss. So Sosa could not pose a threat to Tappy. And his challenge probably burnt out in the first four or five rounds. Rekindled very briefly over the subsequent rounds, but uh, I'm afraid nothing too serious from him. But that's not Tapia's fault. That's matchmaking.
Oh, good shot there by Tapia. And that's, well, you know, no point saying it's another round for Tapia, we know that. 100 plays 89 now, two to go. See, Sosa didn't actually make any attempt to connect with his head there. And in fact, didn't connect at all, but Tapia preempted. And the referee did not fall for it, I'm glad to say. Anyway, another show for your book. I'll mention after this round is over. This is then the penultimate round of this WBO Super Flyweight Championship and the holder in the black in the dark blue with the light blue waistband Johnny Tapia a mile in front and to be honest with you he's never looked like putting this challenger away at any time really And once again there, the crowd responding to the baby-faced assassin. Whoa, Sosa there, getting the punches off now. And this is, this is the best spell we've had. And that's the kind of action they both enjoy. Banging in heads together there. Well, it's Sosa who ties him up first. Let me at him, says Tapia. And once again, a clash of heads there. Well, that's what they pay to see. Good shot. One of the hardest punches so far that Tap has landed. Well, it's been a pretty sporting contest, this one. Nice right again from Tapia. Approaching the last 30 seconds of the 11th. Well, I suppose uh, one saving grace for Sosa is it looks like he's going to go the full route. Of course, you can tell his grandchildren he fought for the world title. And once again, a good rally there. Significantly, though, it's Tapia that broke it off. So he does not want to take any risks at all. And once again, a crack. that's the best round we've had, I think, so far. And I think you've got to give that one to Tapia, in spite of the fact that uh, Sosa let go, let fly with a lot of punches. Now, the other date for your diary, if you live in the north of England, in Sheffield, to be precise, my old mate Dennis Hobson's got a show. Thursday the 6th of April at the Pine Grove Country Club in Sannington in Sheffield. Get along there and support that if you can. Although, I must admit, tickets are a bit scarce. Get in quickly. So there's then the 12th and final round of this WBO Super Flyweight title. I don't like to refer to them as junior divisions, as you know. Super sounds so much better. Well, Tapia need only get through this last three minutes to retain his championship for the first time. And he's really going for it here. And there's never really any stage in this fight where the referee, Ismael Fernandez, has 
ever been likely to step in. And Jose Sosa, nicknamed El Monito, which uh, sounds like he likes to make a few quid. Little money, possibly. I don't know. Not too au fait with the Spanish, I'm afraid. I'm just getting the grips with English. So halfway through the 12th and final round then. And Tapia looking a good thing. And of course the one match to lick your lips about would be with the 20-year-old uh, Danny Romero. What a fight that would be. I wonder who your money would be on. In fact, it seems like the natural match to make when Tapia starts getting tired of this game, as he inevitably will. He's 28 now, a super flyweight's go. That's uh, pretty ancient. And if the money's right, of course, Romero could be next. Oh, down the line, I should say. Thirty seconds to go then, and this has been a real shutout. Absolute shutout for Tapia, in my opinion. And Tapia, not content. Well, it's all over now. There's no stoppage going to be possible. It's all over. So Johnny Tapia surely retains his WBO Super Flyweight Championship in his first defence. And I've got that massive score. 120-107 on my card. And that's a big, big margin. That's 12 rounds to zero and one by the two-point margin. So we wait for the judges, of course. A Mexican, a Puerto Rican and an Arizonan. Time to tell you that I'll be back in this seat next week. Tuesday to be exact, Roy Jones defending his IBF super middleweight crown. You won't want to miss that. And, of course, a chance to evaluate how Jones will fare against Britain's Nigel Benn. Should they uh, meet, as rumours have it that they will, in Britain in the summer? Who knows? So don't forget those two shows, Monday in Northampton, Thursday in Sheffield. British boxing needs support like it's never needed it before. And, of course, any other shows that you come across. Get along there. There's nothing like being there, is there? Ladies and gentlemen, Here we go, then. read the scorecards. Judge Rafael Lopez Santos scored about 117-110. Oh, gave three rounds against Tapia. Judge Nelson Vasquez scored about 120-107. Same as me. Judge Aaron Kaiser scored about 118-109. The winner, well, and still the two rounds against Tapia. Well, I can't think of a single second Johnny of any of the rounds that he lost, but Tapia, the right man won. That's the main thing. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the show this evening. Don't forget, as I say, Roy Jones, possibly, possibly, pound for pound, the greatest fighter on this planet at the moment. Next Tuesday. In the meantime, enjoy, take care, and uh, I'll look to have your company then. Thank you, goodbye.